Hello everybody and welcome to this Blender Diploma tutorial and uh, today I'm going to show you how the Blender 2 Octane exporter works and how to set up a simple scene or set up the basic stuff inside of Octane and this tutorial will concentrate mainly on pitfalls inside of Octane because Octane and the exporter are both still beta versions and they are still under development. So. There's just a couple of things I stumbled across and uh, that took me quite some time to figure out so I just thought I'd go ahead and save you that time. So here we are inside Blender and this is my open scene. And if you want to um, install or uh, activate the plugin, you need to press Control alt u or of course File User Preferences and then click on Install Add-on and uh, then you need to locate the zip file that you downloaded and just click on that. Do not unpack it. Once you double clicked on that or pressed Install Add-on it will then uh, appear in this line and you can activate it and uh, before you activate it this is what Blender looks like and after you do so the interface in the buttons menu will slightly change and the biggest change are probably over here in the render settings you need to fill out some forms before you get started and for example you need a project path and uh, it used to be that you can't use any spaces I'm not sure if that is still the case but just in case avoid spaces in the file name or in the directory name okay so choose one directory and then choose a project name and I'll call this praying mantis octane and I checked um, my praying mantis has a dimension of 0.9 so if I check decimeters here that would be it's nine centimeters long and that's approximately the right size for a praying mantis probably a tiny bit too big but that's okay so you can see you can choose all sorts of units which is awesome and I think the most they in fact uh, the effect is the depth of field and also some scattering stuff and uh, probably the caustics as well so if you want an accurate and physically correct size of your image or of your models then try and keep it up to scale then you can check create or replace OCS file and uh, I wouldn't recommend that because if there is no OCS file available then the exporter will create it for you anyways and if you if there is one available it will be overwritten but uh, there is some sort of danger in that because if you have changed a lot of settings in Octane they will be gone then of course there is write materials into the OCS file I would also leave that unchecked and that is because if they are not uh, there yet they will be written anyways and if they are there yet they might get overwritten so um, don't do that <laughs> I mean, do whatever you want but I wouldn't recommend it and then I would e recommend to export the camera from the scene then you need to check the or you don't need to but it's a good idea to check the octane export settings you can limit the export to the selection of course that means I have only the mantis selected only the mantis gets exported if you have unchecked selection then you can check remove hidden then hidden objects won't be rendered and also remove invisible then those objects that, that wouldn't get rendered in Blender internal because you pressed Control H or uncheck the camera in the outliner they won't be rendered and then you have some export options I would just leave all of those settings as they are and just uh, continue on I mean rotate 90 degrees that is to American standard Blender has European standard ZX is points up so most of the programs need to rotate the scene by 90 degrees apply modifier of course is the same as if you would click apply here and make the modifier real and then um, UVs of course it's a good idea to export UVs especially if you're using them and um, I would not recommend to use Octane with textures without UV unwrapping because you can get some weird results and I'm not even sure if it's meant to be like that. There are some procedural textures inside of Octane but um, they seem to work better if the object is unwrapped when I tested them. Okay so you can basically leave those export settings alone then you need to check the Octane binary that is the directory directory where your octane ex uh, executable or I guess in Mac DMG 
file is located. And um, this here means that um, if it's checked off, Octane will choose by itself which GPU it uses. I guess that is the standard for most of the settings, and I would recommend you to keep Verbos logging in the console checked because it's a lot easier to spot mistakes if you have a Verbos console. Okay, so let's have a look at the world settings. You can choose all the world settings in Octane, basically. You can already sort of predict in Blender. You can see there's a difference between direct lighting and path tracing for setting up your scene, setting up the lighting, and navigating around your scene. I would definitely recommend direct lighting because it's a lot faster, but for what we're doing, we're going to need path tracing later on. I'll check that inside of Octane. Okay, these are the standard settings, ambient occlusion distance, specular depth, and so on. I would recommend you to leave those alone or to go over them by yourself. And one last thing, um, Octane has a very nice daylight environment. We'll get to that later, and you can use that if you want to. You can also use a HDR map and so on. This is also sort of a post post rendering stuff. Exposure makes the image darker or brighter. The f-stop does not have anything to do with the depth of field. This is just like in Lux Render. Exposure, f-stop, ISO, and gamma are different ways of controlling the overall brightness of the image. And you can also have, you have a built-in vignette, which I like. And uh, yeah, these are some post-rendering uh, image or um, color correction positor settings that you can use. But uh, for the most, I'm going to ignore them by now. And let's have a look at the materials. You might notice I have removed all textures from the Mantis material. And that is because I prefer to create my materials inside of Octane. That means I uh, have a node set up for each material, and that just makes it a lot easier to control once the settings get too complex. Because the material settings in Octane, I'm sorry, this is not meant as a critique, but for me they are a bit hard to keep an overview, because you have to scroll up and down a lot and click inside of your object a lot to scroll to the different materials. So this is why I create nodes inside of Octane. This is going to be a specular material. I already know that. So I'm going to uh, check specular. It doesn't make any difference because I'm going to create the nodes anyways. I just wanted to point out that this is possible. And um, you can set a few of the um, settings over here. But again, I would recommend you to do that inside of Octane. Now I'm going to quit the local view. And you can see here I have two mesh lights. I'm going to change, yeah. Now I'm in uh, solid view again, and uh, you can see I have two mesh lights over here, and those mesh lights are, except for the sunlight, they are the only light that Octane supports, to my knowledge, but um, they're absolutely enough. If you want to make a mesh light, you should check diffuse. And then instead of the standard null emission that you have when you check diffuse, you choose black body. Black body means that the temperature of the black body is responsible on how warm or how cold this light is. If you want colors like green, you would have to use a texture for that. And uh, of course, you can uh, select the power and, uh, well, you probably would not want a bump it put into your light. So. Let's leave those. And um, this here, I call lamp 02 and lamp 01 because I want to be able to control the two lamps individually. The ground here is just a material where I clicked on diffuse. That's it. No other changes. And uh, the praying mantis, as we just had, is a specular material. And as I said, I wouldn't recommend you to get the textures inside the material already, especially because if they are faulty, then you will get an error message. And Octane will not launch if you have an um, image texture with an invalid path. So especially if you're swapping blend files from two different computers, you should not include the textures inside of that, but rather import them as a node inside of Octane. And one last thing. 
I have created a depth of field object. That means I inserted an empty over here and called it DOF for depth of field. And then in the camera settings, for the depth of field settings, I, rather than setting a distance, I set a depth of field object. Big advantage is if I now move the camera closer to my mantis, you can see uh, by this yellow line that the depth of field stays the same. That used to be impossible, but thanks to version 1.12, a lot of the bugs I wanted to talk about today have been fixed, and I'm very, very happy about that. Finally, if something does go wrong, let's uh, provoke that. Let's create a new texture. I think image uh, clouds textures will be largely ignored. So uh, let's just uh, make a space here instead of uh, the underscore. And that will, uh, of course, uh, in disable Blender from finding the texture. If I now were to press render still image, I would get an error message, but I would not see it. In order to see it, you need to go to help and toggle the system console. And you can see here, there has been a test render already. So, and also I, um, Blender is trying to defocus. I'm going to go over here and go to the scene. You probably don't have that set up, so you're fine, but I need to remove it. If there is a button to uncheck post-processing, you, you can go back to Blender Render and then uncheck it, or you can just uncheck use notes or uh, delete all your notes. Those are the couple of different uh, settings I came across. And let's have a look at the console. Let's click, click on render still image and check the console again. This is where it started. It said rendering still image, call to render without options and so on. It's rescaling the scene by a factor of 0.1 and uh, this is the frame number of course I'm not going to go over all of these but um, I'm going to go over the error message it says something wrong happened please check console and this of course is the console and funny enough the um, space that I created in the Vorzeichnung in the head um, PNG here has automatically been fixed to an underscore so um, there is that actually didn't work, but fortunately I created another error message because that file came from a directory with a space in it. So um, this is why this didn't work. If this name here was incorrect, then I think the renderer would have told you there's something wrong with this and that material in the texture slot. So all I'm going to do is delete this texture and try this again. Um, the remaining error message is in German because I think that uh, it directly can use the error message from Windows. It says the process can't be executed because the, the file is in use. So uh, if you encounter that error message, make sure that Octane is closed or just rename your file. And that actually worked. Octane is starting and it should import my praying mantis. And there we go. The depth of field is working nicely. The material... <laughs> okay, of course the depth of field is not still working if I move the camera. Because the depth of field object, of course, that was inside Blender and that was not inside of Octane. And you can immediately see Octane is lightning fast and the praying mantis is already um, being lit. Now let's talk about some of the traps that you can fall into inside of Octane. For example, and this is probably the most important one, and I am very sure that the Octane team is actually working on that, but there is no undo button. And um, let's have a look at, what, at how to uh, create materials. You can see the materials. This is your object. This is what came from Blender. It's an OBJ that the exporter uh, created for you and loaded inside the Octane. Then you can see that these these slots, they are material slots. You can see this is the mantis material and this is the lamp and the floor material. And um, since Octane does not uh, distinguish by object but rather by material, it is very important that you keep the materials to a minimum. If you feel like uh, there's a floor in the ceiling, they can have the same color by all means do so because this list is going to get along. One of the biggest um, dangers, so to speak, 
with the uh, non no undo button is if I scroll down here and my mouse lands on sort of lands on a uh, one of these sliders it will then instead of keeping scrolling it will then stop scrolling and change that um, slider so that's very dangerous make sure if you're scrolling always to be with your mouse over this or over this line and let's go over all the workflow if I want to create a new material I can uh, right click here and say add and uh, materials I'm going to use a um, specular material specular material is sort of um, in my eyes I would say it's sort of the all materials there's glossy diffuse and specular so everything that doesn't fall into the category of glossy or diffuse is specular glass translucent material and so on it's all specular and uh, you can see I'm running out of uh, screen space and if I hold control and um, drag across here then I will only change the picture while if I don't hold control and drag across my picture will start re-rendering. Uh, same thing for control and mouse wheel that will zoom into the picture and just mouse wheel will zoom the camera into your scene. And now I have to double check my depth of field did get out of focus but not to worry there are some pickers over here. This is an autofocus picker and if I now pick the nose then my focus will automatically go to wherever the nose is which is very handy. Then there is a material picker. Material picker means if I click on a face then the material of that face will be highlighted here and also here. So now I know this is my praying mantis material and I'm going to bring this in. As I said glass is also specular and this actually looks quite funny. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, how to texture uh, the mantis will discuss in the next tutorial but there are some more things you have to be aware of for example if you zoom in at some point your mouse w your mouse uh, your zoom will stop you can zoom in perpetually you can see here now it's stopped and if you hold shift then one mouse will zoom will uh, be the same uh, as 10 so your zoom will be 10 times as fast and now my picture has disappeared entirely if I click this in theory I should uh, okay this button here resets the camera view to default now I'm pretty far away but I guess I found it again autofocus there we go yeah there are some glitches with the at least with my mouse it might be my mouse but still some uh, with the um, dragging there is some weird stuff but I don't really care because I get my camera from blender anyways now what happens if I want to disconnect the node? Because in Blender, what you would do is uh, drag this out. It doesn't work at all. What I need to do is drag out the tube here, connecting them. And now you can see that the uh, material slot is now not filled anymore. And um, this is kind of a weird thing. I'm not sure if this is intentionally, but um, if I now pick this material, you see nothing, nothing happens. Once you connected a node, the only way to change the material or the only way to use the material is to create a new node. And I, I'm happy I just clicked on that because in the beginning I did not know at all what this was supposed to be. I clicked on the material and immediately my scene changed. If I click on this again, my scene changes back to the praying mantis and that is because these two options here are enabled. If this is enabled and I click on the material then it will launch the default octane render cube or render um, icon in order to preview the material and I also uncheck this one just to be sure that um, my render process if I leave this rendering for like half an hour before I come back and change my settings and I click on this material my process is gone so one important feature I just realized these lamps are not lamps. Um, they still have the glossy material, so that's, uh, this seems to be a slight bug. But the um, environment lighting, or the lighting of the scene, rather comes from over here. Uh, this is a texture, and uh, float texture means black and white, and uh, the power is 
2 or I set this to 2 and uh, float texture means between black and white it's white and the power is 2 so the scene is evenly lit and um, this is actually something I did not expect to be honest so if I wanted to use the two mesh lights I'd have to change the material and I will go over that in the next part let's change this to a daylight environment and uh, this daylight environment is quite cool you can pick any place in the earth you can change the month the day the GMT offset and the hour of the day GMT offset is uh, time zone so this is automatically checked Berlin and I can of course also um, decrease the power because this is quite bright and you can see that uh, this is one thing I am not entirely sure why this is happening or why this is the only way to control it but if you change this to be in the morning of course it will tint orange but if you choose uh, during the day it will tint your scene blue these are of course the shadows from my mesh lights and uh, I have not found a way to uh, use the sunlight without tinting your scene. So this, um, if you know, um, if you know a way, let me know. You can of course uh, correct that in the post processing. But uh, for now, I'm just using the um, my own lighting, and uh, I guess that's it for the most common traps or the most common settings inside of Octane and I hope you join me when I actually export the entire model and try to fake the subsurface scattering inside of Octane because it's not yet supported. Well thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you next time.